Welcome to the Guitar Dads Podcast, a podcast for guitar dads by guitar dads. This week, you too many, we found another band you need to check out, and don't you dare use that tone when hailing a cab. Does any of this matter this week on the Guitar Dads Podcast? Now, two guys who could really be reworked and improved, Matt and Dave. <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm Matt. And I'm Dave, and welcome to the pod everybody, episode 96. 96. Welcome, welcome back, everybody. Ooh, the old 96er. The, the old 96er. There yeah, we go. Very we good. made it. Yeah. The old 96er. Yeah. Classic, classic movie. John, classic movie. John Candy, Dan Aykroyd. If you haven't well, seen that movie, you should definitely go watch it. Like, yeah, right if you now. haven't watched The Great Outdoors, first of all, what's wrong with you? Stop what's listening to this you? pod. Put us on pause. <laughs> go watch the movie and then come back. And then come back and do and come talk to us. But the old yeah. 96er. Anyway. The old 96er. Here right. we are. We're back again. Back at it. New year, 2023. Back and exciting better than ever. times. Exciting times for the Guitar Dads pod. We're back yeah. at it. What's going yeah, on, that- Dave? We're exciting times because of you guys. We uh, just want always, as we always do, we thank you listeners for tuning in each and every week, uh, wherever you are, all over the world. And um, those of you who know where we are on Instagram, at Guitar Dads Podcast, if you don't know. And um, you can come check us out in our uh, Facebook group, at Guitar Dads Podcast, over there. And uh, like our page. And don't forget to put a review wherever you're streaming this pod. That really helps us out. And don't forget to subscribe and, you know, all that stuff. You you guys know the drills. I mean, how many podcasts do you listen to and they all say the same thing? So you know like what to do. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Join right? the Facebook group. And join the Facebook group because this really helps this thing out. And we're having such a great time with this thing. We're, we're loving it. And it's growing. And because it's all because of you guys. So we totally, we really are humbled. To, uh, we saw our 2022 stats this week and i think matt I, I think i speak for matt when i say we were very very humbled to know that this thing has grown so much in the last year and uh it's really because of all you listeners so thank you from the bottom of our hearts we mean it we really do mean it from the bottom of our hearts dave and i had like a moment not not to, not together <laughs> but kind of separately when we looked at the year in review and we were like wow you know this podcast is coming up on two years old actually as of next week it's coming up on our two year anniversary and you know it's it's just really great that you guys are listening continue to listen continue to tell your friends about it so thank you yep. thank you thank you thank so. you so moving on yeah what are we doing i mean there's a lot going on in the dataverse very sad news in the guitar dataverse. oh you want to start sad yeah we should yeah well, let's get that. the bad news out of the way i think everybody has heard the passing of the legendary jeff beck yes i mean is there any uh, now Truth be told, I mean, I don't think you and I are, are huge Beck fans, no, we, we so to speak. No, we definitely However, yeah. however, I don't know how you can listen to Jeff Beck play and not call him one of the greatest of all time. Oh, I totally. Mean, yeah. He's just, he was just incredible. He Absolutely. he really is incredible. And like Dave said, like Dave and I like didn't like grow up like listening to all his music and everything and just idolizing him. But we always, I, I guess we like idolize the people that were kind of heavily um, influenced by by Jeff Beck, yeah. right? So that's probably the biggest influence on us as people that maybe haven't listened to it. But if you go back and listen to some of his albums, like there's some just amazing guitar work happens. <laughs> I mean, there's oh, yeah. no I doubt mean, that it's awesome stuff for sure. Yeah. Oh no, he's yeah. he he was incredible, and the you know the world will probably never see a guitarist like him again. Yeah, and yeah, um, it's just true. sad. It's so sad. So bacterial meningitis. Wow. Yeah, what is, I know. What that's what a, it's horrible. So yeah, I mean, this is just so sad for the music world, for the guitar world, and just for the world in general. Because I think you're right, Dave. I don't think we'll ever see another another Jeff Beck. And it's just really sad. Yeah, he when, was unique. When we he was yeah. very unique. He yeah. was, you know, and just to lose somebody like that is just such a big shock to everybody. And it was a quick illness too. It wasn't like this was a, yeah. a drawn on it. Like, you know, with like Eddie, we kind of knew what this was coming for a couple of years, maybe, you know, Eddie wasn't really active. We heard rumblings. He wasn't doing well. 
Um, you know, I think we were all shocked when, when he went, but, um, you know, Jeff Beck, like he was just on tour with Johnny Depp. I've been watching yeah. like little clips on YouTube of him and Depp, uh, like tearing it up. It's like, yeah, this is unbelievable. This is terrible. So it, it really is. Yeah. It's really sad. So, you know, our hearts go out to everybody. That's a Jeff Beck fan. And, and there's um, a lot you know, of you. And there's a lot, and you know, this is just, yeah, you know, another another legend is gone. So another one gone. Yeah, you know, it's funny because uh, one of our um, one of our uh, guitar dads podcast group members on Facebook had reached out about something completely different, but then we we started talking about this and like who would be like who's your great like who when when somebody goes what do you, how who's gonna be the one that goes that really affects you? Yeah, 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 yeah. And for me, it might be, it could be like somebody like Paige, maybe. Because I'm just thinking like, you know, it's really, this is really morbid to say, but kind of who's next in line? You're thinking yeah, like, who's next? you know, the well, Keith uh, Richards of the world. Keith- <laughs> <laughs> well, you well, made a joke, he'll never you made die. a joke, Dave. Dave and I were texting about this right when it happened yesterday. And and, and Dave said, nope, another, what'd you say, Dave? Another artist that Keith Richards outlived. I mean, that's, it's really unbelievable when you think about it. And I'm being serious. Like, no, it, that, it is. You know, everybody knows that. Everybody knows that joke, but. It is. Um, it's unbelievable. Yeah, Jimmy, think about the guys that are up in age, like Jimmy Page, you know, yeah. the Joe Perry's of the world. And, yep. Yep. Um, you know, they're all in their mid seventy. Well, Page is eighty, right? No, I think Page, Page 80, is seventy nine. I think yeah. he's seventy nine. Well, it's he just close. had a, he just had a birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think the he's other day, his I think birthday right. was the other day. Did he turn seventy? Yep. He didn't turn eighty, did he? I don't think so. I think he turned seventy nine. Yeah, yeah. So still yeah. looks great. Yeah, I mean, he, he just really turned. Still looks yep, great. he just turned seventy nine the other day on the ninth. Yeah. Yep. So. Yep. So. Yeah, he's doing. So thankfully, he's still around and doing his thing. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. Sad. I mean, it's it's sad. Yeah. I I. So anyway, we should probably let's move on to something a little bit more uplifting. Okay. Yeah. What's Although this uplifting? isn't really that uplifting. You know. Here we go. Bad. More bad news. Yeah, what's uh, some you, more bad news? So I we've talked about the journey, the journey argument, you know, the the journey saga. Oh yes, saga. yeah, I heard about this. Yeah, yeah. And I I think through all of this, I didn't realize that it, that Jonathan Kane, the keyboardist, he was still planning on touring with Journey. Even oh, through oh, all really? this. Oh, yeah. interesting. Oh, okay. So he, I guess he there was yep. a post on on one of the socials on Instagram. He was like in ski gear, skiing off somewhere, <laughs> and made a. He made a a, a a comment that he you know is looking forward to uh, getting back on the road with Journey this year. Okay. So I also heard that Steve Perry dropped that suit that they had about the the copyright yes. stuff. Yes, he um, did. Yep. So maybe yep. they maybe you know maybe the Journey camp is um you know maybe all is well in the Journey camp. I don't know. Yeah, it might be. I I mean, yeah. wow, well, is it ever really going to be well? No, you know, no after no, everything no, no. that's gone on. No, probably not. So probably not. No, yeah, I don't think well. so either. But I mean, it would still be, I still say it, it would still be kind of cool. I know you're not, you know, you won't see Journey without uh, Steve Perry, but I, I would love to see Neil Sean play. Yeah, no, I, no, I didn't say I wouldn't go to a show and watch him play. No, I believe I you that. did. I no, believe I just you did said, on episode no, I, 53. I didn't say I wouldn't go. <laughs> I just said I'm not that excited about going. But anyway, what else is going on? If you want to, if you want to prove me, if you want to prove me right, listeners, go back and listen to every single episode because we talked about this like seven or eight times. <laughs> go back and go every single episode, and then drink every time we mention it. That's right. And tell us how drunk you get. Okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> speaking of drunk, I think I'm going to have to get drunk to listen to the to the new U2 album that's about. Oh to come yeah, out. I heard about this too. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Okay, yeah, yeah. so 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 essentially, what they're gonna what they're doing is kind of going back in their catalog and they're reworking. 40 songs, songs, reworking them completely. Yeah. And this is what they're putting out as This is what music. they come up with. I mean, <laughs> this it's is kind like, of unbelievable. No, I agree. Like, what the hell? Like, this is, I mean, I look, I'm, you know, I'd love to, I haven't got the take yet from our, our uh, super fan, you two uh, friend Dave, um, our other friend Dave, my other friend Dave. Um, I haven't got his take on this yet. I mean, look, I'm sure some of it might be a little bit interesting to hear like how they remake some stuff. I'm sure they could do some cool stuff. Yeah, but, but like, do you really need to hear some of the stuff in different four, keys with yeah, it, or in like, different tempo probably, and different? Yeah, like probably not. Yeah, I agree. No. Like that's not really what I'm looking for from you two. And what no. happened to them making an awesome um, rock and roll rock record? record. We just what talked about that? this several like a few months ago. Yeah, Bono had the, said they were going to do like a big rock record. It was going to sound something unlike anything else they've the done. Hell? What the hell? What happened to that? I pff, 
I mean, this is anyway. I, this is me, this is like a me. this is a load of this is a load of crap. It's a load of crap. I'm, I'm so we'll see. This. We'll see what happens. Look, something's going to do. They're going to do something incredible because I'm a big YouTube fan. Something, something incredible is going to happen. I'm going to be like, oh, geez, that version of one. I love that version. Yeah, um, that's true. We'll see. But forty we'll, songs. I know forty seems excess. Uh, maybe an album, twelve. You know, forty yeah. songs. I mean, really, <laughs> this is unbelievable. Anyway, well, good luck, guys. We'll see how it comes out. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I'm not well, that convinced about it. So. But we'll see so, how it goes. Yeah. But I, I did want to mention another thing in news, Dave. It's not in the notes, but I sent you the article. So um, Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Universal Music Group. So, I mean, this isn't massive news. That's why it's a good, like, thing for the news and notes section. So U- Universal M- kind of big Music Group, the CEO, which I don't remember his name. Um, he, he put like a, you know, like a new year's letter out to the, to his company, to the entire company. And of course, you know, the press gets wind of it. Like they always do with kind of public things like that. Um, even if it is just a, like a company communication, it always is basically a public thing. And he basically goes on this kind of diatribe in the letter about how they really need to change the model with streaming, and how there's a lot of bad actors in streaming that are gaming this system, right? And, um, you know, without getting into all the nitty gritty details, he, he was basically saying like, you know, we need, and you could see like, this is totally, you know, a self-serving view with, for Universal Music Group, which it should be, right? I mean, they're in business to to make, m- to make money. money. Um, <laughs> you know, but, but still, like, you know, basically saying like, there's a lot of crap out there on Spotify and Apple music really put out there only to get um only 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 to get the like the plays right that like show up in different playlists and different things like that and i and the way i read it it wasn't even that oh these are just this is just music that isn't major label music that these people suck it was more like not even he he was basically saying some of this stuff will barely even pass for what what we would call like music right so to me that makes it sound like there's like um you know there's just like kind of like what um, does that mean i i don't know cuz i haven't experienced this on spotify or apple music but he's basically implying that there's like f- filler type of stuff in there that just gets spun and it's put out by what he who he calls the bad actors right. um you know, just to get just to get more and more plays and plays and plays like automatically. I don't fully understand. Again, I don't want to get into the detail because I don't fully understand. Yeah, it. we could go but down. Basically, a hole saying that there's people. The bottom line on this is he's basically saying there's people out there that are trying to game the 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 play. Um, you know, like the pay per play system that these streaming services have, and we really need to change this as a model. So I just thought that was interesting as something that is no, out there, is and that and yeah, well, the, and the, the UNG model is calling out so yeah the the model's been broken for a very long time the model's been broken since its infancy really when you think about it it was kind of it was born broken it, it's just yeah and it i don't know yeah. if there's a real yeah. you know it's like it's like anything else in the world when you have something that's broken you can't really you can't fix it completely because it would require a complete tear down which would never happen yeah, um yeah, yeah, logistically yeah. that's impossible and then secondly there's there's too many players on both sides of the table that um, would never let that happen, you know. Can you imagine, like, if, 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 if the model, if, if, if in fantasy land, if all of a sudden, you know, the artists and the in the streaming services and the in the you know labels and everybody got together at a table and tried to discuss this? Yeah, yeah, it, it would, would never go anywhere. Compl- but no, it, go no. You know, it it does sound to me like he's advocating for more kind of gatekeeping of what exactly yes. goes on. The streaming services, which we've talked about a lot on the podcast before, which we 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 surmise that the major labels are already paying off Spotify and paying off Apple the same way that they used to pay off radio stations to play their artists. The same thing is going on with Apple and Spotify, where these big these big uh, labels are paying to get their people up on the top of playlists to get them on the recommendations and all this stuff. But this this CEO, he's actually saying, well, no, the the algorithm rhythms and the um you know the model work against us you know so i think it's interesting so i don't really know what's going on but it's just an interesting little thing that's going on it's interesting there. and it's it is you know? an, it is kind of an opinion in a way you know of course it there, is yeah yeah but you know there's, there's i'm sure there's a lot of truth to it as well so 
Yeah, it's interesting, and, and more to come. I'm sure we will more be talking to come. about this we, again. We, we love to watch this stuff, so we'll keep yeah. you updated. Yeah. We've been hammering this topic for a while. So <laughs> well, it's it's we, in, it's important, I think. It's right? very important. Oh, no, I, I don't disagree with you. I think this yeah. is something that we, we need to be talking about all the time because it's, it's you know, it, it really, it behooves every music lover to care about this thing, you know? Yep, it To does. care about streaming services and how they operate, to care about the artists and how much they get paid and yep. whether they get screwed. It completely behooves you as a music fan. Totally. So it totally does. Attention. It totally does. So and much so, more so than it ever used to when when it was, you know, the days of the big record deal and that kind yeah, of thing. And the radio days of the big that. record deal. And, you know, you listen to people on the radio and you go to the shows. Now it's just, you know, it's harder for artists to make money off of music. Right. It's more yep. about the merch and the touring and that kind of stuff. Right. So, so, if you, so again, being if you creative, care about your artists, this, yeah. then you really need to pay attention to what's going on. You here do. Because you do. It doesn't yeah. right now. It doesn't bode that well for your favorite art for some of your favorite artists. That's right. Yeah, especially you like know. the lesser known ones. The lesser known ones, right, I yeah, mean. But yeah. I don't. I shouldn't. I should. I shouldn't uh, make a blanket statement like that. Yeah, I should yeah. clarify that and make but sure speak, that the, you know. But it's a good segue. So bands. no, yeah. that's right. So it's it's a good segue. So speaking of bands that um you know maybe are lesser known that you should know oh, about. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I so uh, uh we have not done this uh segment in a while, but we're bringing it back tonight. So <laughs> it's back, bands baby. you should be listening to. Yeah. And this is a band out of Toronto, Canada. Um, shout out to any of you listeners up in Canada. Yeah. These guys now they're called the commoners. It's a four yeah. piece. Yeah. And, um, and to me, they're anything but common. Um, think now when, th when I first heard these guys, I'm thinking black crows, I'm thinking like Southern rock, soul rock, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, the 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 singer his name's Chris Medhurst and he's he's he kills it I mean man, uh, he's, he's great his vocals yeah. are great yeah uh, did great. you get a chance to listen to the the album I, that I sent I, you they got I two did. albums one came out in 2016 I think they've I listened they've to a, the one from 2022 yeah yeah the one yeah, yeah. from 2022 I think is a bit of a different lineup if I'm not mistaken yeah it's kind of yeah this is I would agree it's kind of I wouldn't know if I'd call it southern rock but it's definitely like it's it's got that. It's a bit, I like I like soul rock. I mean, soul rock, yeah. Like it's a little bit like rootsy, you know, like it's rootsy that kind of that. Good, but this, yeah. but there is like electric guitar. It's not like when I hear like roots rock. I guess that's I don't know. I don't really. What is roots rock? Is it like Tom Petty? <laughs> I, I guess I don't know. No, because I I think people clear. Well, you know, you hear people call petty anything from like southern rock to, to yeah yeah so there's that, definitely like a petty yeah. feel to some of this this stuff i mean obviously a different vocal style but it is that like yeah. you know that like not heavily distorted guitars but like nice crunchy guitars yep um you know there's nice kind of organ parts in it um oh yeah the organs and, are great and, and the singer is and the singer i agree the singer is real good and he, he does have that chris robinson type of vibe to him but um yeah i really like him i really like him. it's so funny though dave like dave like sends me the this 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 album and i look at the i look at the picture of the the four guys are on the cover of the album and i'm like i think i know exactly what this band's gonna sound like <laughs> <laughs> I mean that yeah that album cover pretty much puts them right in that box right yeah, it's, 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 yeah so go check, it's, go check I mean that's not a bad thing it's just it's just it's, no it's, it's not like, a bad thing at all it is what it is it is what it is but they but and they Matt's are referencing uh yeah. Matt's referencing their 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 latest uh release that it's came called, out November 4th called Find a Better Way Find a Better Way yep the commoners find a better way anyway so I definitely think it's really worth checking these guys out they're definitely a band you should be listening to and yep. um you know as we usually do we'll probably hit them up on instagram see if they're, they're interested in coming on the <laughs> show right. <laughs> i would love to these guys sound great so yeah check yeah, them out they are they are. definitely check them out so yeah that was cool it was good good find because we haven't really featured a new band in a while and it's like what's going on like we're slacking well I, yeah. i've kind of got yeah i got a little bit lazy with that because i yeah, used yeah. to be really good well, about I did scouring too. And, yeah yeah <laughs> but you're 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 the main main band finder of this duo i don't know about that but yeah I, okay are. sure yeah. yeah that was good that's that good good one good one so what's so next? shall we what's next should we move on to our headliner for the night yeah 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 so let's talk you about wanna do, a little you want to do this yeah, yeah right, i want to do, do this because it came up last week somewhat so dave like we talked about this last like week a part on the two podcast. this is yeah, kind of like this part is a gear two. this is a yeah. gear related thing so if you're not so much into gear well you should listen anyway because it's kind of interesting uh, <laughs> <laughs> way to turn the listeners off yeah yeah yeah. we don't don't stop listening just can continue to listen so um so dave got a silver <laughs> jubilee 
last week, the Silver Jubilee mini. I, I, can I just Jubilee pause real studio. quick? Can I can I yeah. say something? Yeah. I I'm just like staring at you on in, in your room there and seeing the Silver Jubilee back there for all these you know, for the for the year and a, what a year and a half you've had it. We've yeah, been doing yeah. this pod. Yeah, yeah. And for me, for me to now literally turn around and see the exact same thing in my room, I'm very happy. You should be happy. It's incredible. <laughs> so you've been really having a great time with this amp, right, Dave? Oh, I love it. Yeah. What are you been yeah. playing with it? I mean, I, t- I like I told you before we started recording. They just made it federal. It's, it is a federal offense now to play anything but a Les Paul through the Marshall Jubilee. Uh, oh well, you know what that you. Put any any put anything. Put the telly <laughs> through it and play it on the. Bridge. No, no, they all sound great. Like they all telly's do. on the bridge sound incredible through there, and then a strat. Anything on the strat sounds great through the jube. So oh, I would highly does. recommend I'm just, it. I'm just so I'm just joshing. So we had this conversation about okay, Dave, you really have to get the matching two by twelve because it's really not right to have a jubilee without the matching cabinet. Right. And I think this is actually true with any head head and cab combo that, you know, it really to me, it really makes a difference if you have the matching cab. I mean, you know, like we were talking uh, of Philip from the 40 watt podcast about this and it just it just doesn't look right. What what are you doing, Dave's? <laughs> so listeners Showing that can't listeners. see what Dave's doing, he's like doing this like a Vanna White. He's doing like a Vanna White of the. Um, <laughs> he's modeling his his guitar. His no his pun cat, intended. His, his amp and cab. But anyway, so so we we're talking about this. Like, oh, you really need to get the the matching cab that goes along with the Jubilee. And I, like I said, I think this is true of any really nice. But amp why? What was your reasoning sense. though? Right. Well, well, the so, aesthetic. The aesthetic is, yeah, so I'm really making an argument now about the aesthetic and what it looks like, you know, both on stage and in your jam rooms and in your man caves and in your studios and all that stuff. So, so there's that, right? But then, you know, we were talking about and it's like, wow, you know, the Silver Jubilee cab costs only like $200 less than the amp itself. You know, so it's right. very, you know, you're talking about like 1400 or 1500 bucks yeah. for a yep. two by 12 cab, right? And it does have like really high quality Celestians in it, right? Um, and it's made out of really high quality materials yep. and it's constructed well and it has the good uh, handles on it. So all these yep. things, like it's a very high quality cab, but then you ask yourself, I mean, this is a lot of money for, you know, essentially an aesthetic, which brings up the question of, is it really the aesthetic? Is there a different, there's a difference in the sound with these cabs because they're constructed is, in a certain way. Is there? And so, as we reference, as we told you guys last week, if you guys are familiar with uh, Jim Lil, he's, he's We're going to shout out Jim Lil as, again. Keep yeah. shouting out Jim Lil. He's, and I finally went back and I watched the rest of those videos. He's he's put out kind of, a, I guess you call it like a, almost like a series. It's a series. On, yeah, it's a series on of YouTube videos, yeah. Of like, where does, where does tone come from? And like, he he goes into like, you know, amp comparisons, cabs comparisons, yeah, yeah, yeah. guitars. Like, you know, is it is, does the tone wood matter? Uh, you know, so does the cab, cab construction yeah. matter? Does the 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 why? And the, uh, it, so anyway, for for purposes of tonight, we're talking about the cab. Yeah. So the cab. So you think about the cab, right? So if you go watch this Jim Lil video, maybe we'll just put a link in the description or something because you should really yeah, see yeah. this video. He really puts in a ton of work. Interesting. And what he does is he asks the question, where does the tone come from in the guitar cab? And basically, you know, I won't explain the whole video because I think it's worth going and watching it. But what he's basically, what he basically, you know, proves in his own way through the process he goes through is there's a bunch of things that matter in the cab, right? One of the things that does not matter is the material that it's made out of. You know, yes, and it, I've told yeah, you, I've yeah. thought, I've said this, and you're like, you're wrong, you're this wrong. Is you what, a, this is what, this is what, you need a quality wood cab. That's right, that's Otherwise, right. Otherwise, so, you're not going to get the tone. That's right. So it's like, you know, is the construction of the cab super important? Is the material of the cab super important? Basically, what he he comes up with was, you know, the material of what it's built out of doesn't really matter. The way it's constructed in terms of like, are you using tongue and groove? Are you just nailing it together? Are there a certain amount of screws? He basically plays with all these things and basically determines on his own through his own way of doing it that, you know, to him, it doesn't really matter. He can't really see a noticeable amount of difference in tone. 
you know, obviously the speaker matters massively, right? So that's the thing, yeah. right? Yeah. That's where the tone and he 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 did a compare he 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 um he he played a comparison of like the speaker outside the cab and inside the cab and yep, yep. right and how much of a difference that like, hear listen to that difference um it it so it's interesting though because you would think it does stand to reason it's not an irrational thought that the wood surrounding the speaker would matter because of of just the physics of sound so. Yeah. I just found yep. the whole thing so yep. interesting that so, uh, no, yeah. it kind of doesn't matter. Yeah. So what matters, of course. So there's a few bunch of things that matter, right? So but, yeah, but yeah. but but you know, some major things are, of course, the speakers that are in it, and and second, the 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 size of the cab, right? So right. in that sense, the construction of the cab matter. Like if you have a massive two by twelve, well, yeah, construction it's by sound size different. Is a di- it's going to sound different than a smaller box, a two by 12. If you have a closed back versus open back, I mean, these, that you would think that'd be obvious, but you know, he wanted, he tested it all out. So, you know, according to Jim Will, he's basically saying, you know, material doesn't matter. He, he went as, when he, when he determined this, he went as wow, far hey, as. Hey, we have breaking, we have breaking news. Oh yeah. What's the breaking news? As I just saw on my phone as, as this came up, Lisa Marie Presley just died. Yeah. She was, I saw that earlier wow. that she was in the, she was Man, the music world is like it, this yeah, is Lisa like Lisa Marie Ples- uh, uh, Presley. It's been a yeah, rough twenty three. Yeah. Anyway, so sorry to interrupt, but that was breaking news. We need like a breaking news, uh, like you know, jingle kind of thing. Yeah, we do. Oh well, that's sad. Well, see, now more sad. <laughs> that was news. sad. Yeah, more sad. But right. he. Well, sorry but, to interrupt with sad news, but yeah, go ahead. but we back do, into yeah. the cab. So, but yeah. by the time this comes out, everybody will will have um, heard we'll that. Know. But yeah, that is music related. It's music news. You know, the king, yep. the king's wife. Um, so anyway, so no, the king, no daughter. Oh, oh, that's right, daughter. Lisa wait. Marie Presley, yeah. Oh wait, the I thought it was his wife. No, not Priscilla. Oh, it wasn't Priscilla. It was Lisa no. Marie. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm totally confused. I didn't see yeah. that pop up. Oh. Yeah, she was only 54. Wow. Oh, young. that's horrible. Okay, I I put it together that it was it was Priscilla. No, oh, that's really sad. Oh, okay. All right. Well. All right, well, sorry, this is a downer of a podcast. Jeez, sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm looking right, at well, it right here. His daughter. Oh, that's terrible. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. So, anyway. Um, right, let's get back on the cab. Let's get let's back into the cab. So, the cabs. So, he actually went as far as to construct a cab. He he used his orange uh, 2 by 12 which probably a lot of you know about as the as the the template the size kind of dimension yep. template and he built it out of styrofoam put the same V30 the selection V30s and the v- vintage 30s and he basically compared it head to head with the regular cab and he didn't hear a noticeable difference in the tone so you you it's all amazing. might say like that's good and you know I think we have to take this stuff with somewhat of a grain of salt because he was basically doing it through an SM 57 and then he would but the cool thing that he was doing is through the sm57 he was running it through like an eq thing that showed the eq uh, yes, bar, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it showed the difference in eq that the mic was picking up between the different cab con- configurations you know you could argue that's not the only way to measure the sound of a cab what does it sound like in the room Right. right. Why does it sound like in the room in two years? Well, not, yeah, but that you know, to to his yeah. point though, if you're if you're actually because it would it would it would be logical to think that if the cab if you're not hearing much of a difference in the actual sound coming out of the cabinet, then the room is is going to be the same thing, right? So whether you play the what you call a yeah, cheaper no, you can cabinet, make that, versus, that's a legit you know, argument, right? But I, it's going to be the same thing. Yeah, that's a legit argument. But to me, this is a similar argument, Dave, as you know, with a modeler. A mic'd up cab with a modeler kind of sounds, you know, can you really tell the difference between a mic'd up cab and, a, and like a Helix or or an Axe FX? And some people would say, oh, right. maybe like a mic'd up cab, like listening through, like not listen, like, well, um, we'll put it this way. Because well, like, what are, what are, what like are, if what a cab are, is in another, up in the room? If a cab is in another room, like a lot of studios actually do this. You have an isolated yeah. cab in another isolated room. Cabinet, you're yeah. hearing a mic'd cab through studio <laughs> speakers, through the monitors in the studio. Would that sound compared to a modeling sound, you can get pretty close, right? Because you're listening through the same speakers. You're not listening through a cab. It's coming right. cab through a mic into your, your studio monitors. So like it's that kind of argument. Like is a mic'd cab through studio monitors the same as a modeler? 
right? It's different from the if you were standing there in a room with an ant with a cab. Oh, a hundred a thousand. So that so that so, that, so yeah. that it's the same that's argument even, you're yeah. you, but you know, and you're making a counter argument, <laughs> which is, well, you know, if it's picking up on the mic, that's gonna be a pretty good approximation. Yeah, maybe, right. maybe, maybe not, you know. Maybe you know, not. You know, so No, but what I'm saying is you have if you have A if you have AMP A and I mean uh, cab A and cab B and one is a cheaper construction B is the cheaper construction. It doesn't matter if the, if you were telling me and if Jim Lill is saying, okay, this cabinet doesn't sound much different, if at all, to the other cabinet, it doesn't matter what room you put them in, they're going to still sound not that much different. You know what I'm saying? So it's not necessarily the room would make a difference in general for both cabinets. Wouldn't it? It would no, would no. It right. You're right, but you're saying you're not hearing it. But I'm saying like same room, same everything. Like when you're in the room, then you're not going to hear a difference. Theoretically, well, what Jim well, Lill is saying is no matter what, you're not going to hear. He's a difference. saying you're not going to hear a difference. I'm saying that's based on having a, a cab that's mic'd up with in an SM room. 57, right? Right. I'm saying if you're actually in the room hearing the tone, could you tell a difference between a styrofoam? cab or a, a wood cab that, that's what i'm saying like in the room oh, okay yeah, yeah i get you your, that's okay in that's your ears without a mic processing i misunderstood it. yeah you you might you might with that because of the physics of it i would guess I, well um, he's saying you really don't because the right physics, but that's his opinion well, well he goes into but, this though because he says the f- yes. physics of it are exactly the same right but that's the, the mic the only difference is no, no. The, the physics of the cab and the speaker are exactly the same. They're, the only difference is one is wooden, one is styrofoam, right? Yes. No. 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 I'm saying that's his opinion in the room of what it sounds like, and we all know that you know this is so. Subjective. He doesn't. He so doesn't give you, an opinion of, of in the room. He just says like, if you look at the EQ lines that the SM57 is picking up, the EQ lines are very, very close. Yes, so the EQ yeah. line, so that that's a very that's a very objective way of looking at it. It is yeah, listening yeah. with your own ears is subjective. That's what I'm saying. So subjectively, you know, right. is it really true? I don't know. Like that, this is the whole point. Maybe, maybe not. You know, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. So, but anyway, you can take it with well, the what grand- speakers? What, what speakers do you have in the uh, in that in the cab that came? That's that the matching cab. They're, they're, you mean, have V30s in there. They're called they're called G12 Vintage. That's okay. what it says on the specs for the Silver Jubilee. But you haven't popped it back open a check. If I haven't popped it open, but that's what it says on the spec sheet for these G12 vintage. Is that the same as a vintage 30? I don't know. I can I tell know. you that the historically in the 80s, in the late 80s when the Jubilee came out, it was V it was vintage of the 30s I believe in the Jubilee cabs. If you go back and get an 80s Jubilee cab, I'm almost certain you're going to see a, a vintage 30. But these are like sounds like they're kind of slightly tweak tweaked Maybe I was V30s. just going to say they tweaked V30. Yeah, 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 that's what it sounds like to me. So anyway, but the, it sounds great. It does have that V30 kind of uh, feel to it with that kind of high end. Um, but, but, you know, maybe a little bit warmer than that. I don't know. It's a little bit different. So anyway, they sound great. Um, and so there's that. So, so this brought up the point that if that's true, like if Jim Lill is right, then it isn't worth spending all this money on all these expensive cabs because you're playing, paying for construction, you know, obviously you're paying for the higher end speakers, but then, but why don't you save a little bit of money and take a regular cheaper cab, most likely made of MDF and just, but, but is the same dimensions. I'm looking at Dave's cab that's behind him which is a cheaper cab. It looks exact. The dimension wise, it looks exactly the same as my silver Jubilee cab. So it's the exact same cab. Yeah. It, yeah. it is the exact same yeah, yeah. dimension. So it's so, the same, same cab, different speakers, different build. It's different. So it's MDF. So I don't know if I'm willing to tear apart my Jubilee, but you could argue that Dave and I could rip the speakers out of my Jubilee and put them in there and see what it sounds like. <laughs> It's true. And do we the could. same. Now, Marshall te- and, wants to sponsor and, this, and, or Sweetwater, exactly. or any of you guys, and know. do the same test as as Jim Lill, and do it in a similar way, and see if there's a marked difference in the tone. Now, now I, I'm going to say that there wouldn't be. I I bet, and I I told this. I said this to Matt when we talked about yep. it. That I bet blindfolded. If if everything was set up in the room, we walked you in blindfolded, handed you a guitar, and said play, and we a beat them back and forth. I don't believe. With pretty much a hundred percent certainty, you would be able to tell the difference. Well, according to Jim Lill, you wouldn't at all. Yeah, you know that that that's what he's that, saying. That, that that's what he's saying. So it's very. It's I, I think you have yeah. a good you have a good ear. So I think if you spent enough time in there, you might have a shot. 
Well, you know, I'd love to like do, a half an hour. I, well, I, I, like, uh, okay. So the, there's the objective thing. Well, sorry, there's the subjective thing, which is, and you're in the room, you're listening with your own ears. But then the, you know, the Jim Lil. If we if we put it to the Jim Lil test, you really want to put the it SM57 to the SM57 in the in the EQ line to match up the EQ lines. You know, would it, would it be the same? I mean, according to him, it would be. But you know, I don't know. We'd have to we have to try it out. But but I posed this question to the to the group and um, Facebook group, and I said, you know, Guitar Dad's podcast, yeah, Guitar Dad's podcast, and um. And I said, you know, are we crazy for buying these expensive cabs? I mean, they're literally three times the price as like yes. a, as like the MDF yes. cabs, right? So You're crazy. So it's like, are You're we nuts. nuts for doing this just for aesthetic? Absolutely. And then crazy, you know, and you off know, the rails. So I kind of, so I kind of <laughs> contested for those of you that you know want to lug around a cab. MDF is really much. Uh, heavier than nice uh, birch ply it, it's not constructed as well so that if you are kind of kind of gigging um heavily and these are getting bounced around in the back of a van in the back of your trunk you know obviously the the marshall stuff is going to last long, you know not the marshall stuff but the higher end stuff is going to last longer for those reasons but at the same time you still see a lot of these old mdf cabs up so maybe it's just as durable i don't even know if that holds water i think the only thing that holds water is MDF is heavier, a glass, and harder to move around. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I. Yeah, I think you know, that's the only. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think you. I I agree with you. I agree with most things that you said. Not everything, but I agree <laughs> with you in the, to the to the to the. I so if we were actually to do this, yeah, I I don't believe that either one of us could. I really don't believe that either one of us could tell right away. I think yeah. that you probably could. If you spent enough time, because you know you played enough of that amp and cab that you know that sound, yeah, so at well, some point your brain would be able to pick it out. I don't your brain know. would just I know. I think I, I'm like so curious. I feel like we have to do it now. You want to do? But I, I don't really. I, I don't curi- really want to rip apart my Jubilee cab. To be honest, with no, you. I, I don't, don't think you should. Um, but if I had another, if I could, if we could like get another Jubilee cab that I was comfortable ripping apart. <laughs> <laughs> then I would do because it has to be controlled, right, Dave? It has to be my not my. Got to be controlled. Has to be my Same jubilee, room. not your jubilee. It has to be yep. my jubilee. Has to be my the speakers that are in my cab now, not like yep. other speakers that might be equivalent. Same, like everything the same, same except speaker, for same, the, yeah. the cab, the actual That's cabinet. Right. So I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll think about if I really want to rip the speakers out. I've done it before. It seems it's a pretty straight uh, forward thing to do. So. Anyway. No, I think it's a very straightforward <laughs> thing to do, and I hope nobody from Sweetwater is listening. But I think we could buy a buy a couple, do it, and return them. <laughs> return them. <laughs> don't tell or the guitar Sweet, center. Don't tell guitar center. Guitar center, oh, guitar center yeah. doesn't care no matter what. <laughs> they don't care. They didn't return they anything. Do anything. Um, yeah, but anyway, it's an interesting point. And so, tell us what you think. You know, tell us. You know, have you played MDF cabs with updated up? Upgraded speakers, like the low end cabs with upgraded speakers. You notice a difference? Well, um, I'm going to tell you in a in a short in, in short order because I am going to replace the speakers in this cab. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's not going to be apples to apple because it's probably not going to be exact. Same no, speakers, no, no, no. Well, but, but they will sound better. I bet. Yeah. So yeah. So that's interesting. So I, I'm really interested to see this. This is you know it's it's so interesting. And Jim Lil has done this, and he's really opened up a lot of people's eyes. To, to you know old myths or just old beliefs that have always been held for a long time right did he mention something about a difference between like you know say a, a, a straight on two by or four by and a slant yeah yeah he did didn't he meant i can't i can't well, remember no 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 he no, said, no. he didn't he didn't do like he didn't do the slant like marshall has with the slants he talked yep. about he talked about there's some because he's on a marshall he did something he's not with a the, marshall he guy. slant he slanted the baffle, right? And, the slant, then, the slanted, slanted the baffle very, very yeah. slightly, which some, which some people says makes a difference. Now, now it will make it according to him, and I, and actually, I actually, I was in, I was just on a discussion on on one, on on a um, on a Facebook group about for the, I think it was a Marshall a Facebook group where somebody asked that exact question, and and pretty much everybody agreed on that thread that the slanted cab is obviously going to sound different than a straight cab because you're taking away volume inside the box. Right. Ah, so, okay. so, yes, so, that makes sense. and that's consistent with Jim Lil. He tested, he said the dimensions of the box matter, right? That right. Ma- so when you change the dimensions of the box, which you do with the slant, that's going to make a difference. And pretty much everybody in the Marshall thing was consistent with that where they said yeah the slant is not going to have as much of a a bassier tone as just the straight because there's more area in the in the straight cab 
um, for the for the base to to re resonate. So when I think that just makes complete sense and it's, con it's yep. exactly consistent with Jim Lill's test. So, but yep. yeah, he did. He tested like, yeah, the, like a baffle around the speaker or no baffle, slightly tilted baffle, all this stuff that just, he said just didn't make much of a difference. So it's it kind of interesting. Baffling. Yeah. It's baffling. <laughs> <laughs> oh geez. Guitar dad. Dad yeah, jokes. Guitar dad right. jokes. So I don't know. So we, guitar did, dad, maybe we, kinda, we should do we this. We kind of killed this topic, Dave. I don't know. I think, I think we should actually go to guitar center, buy these things, do it, return them. They got a 45 day Paul. If we can't get this thing done in 45 days, <laughs> I yeah, think we I mean, should we do could it. do that. We could, I don't know. I'll think about Let's it. Let's do it. Let's think about it. I, I, and for purposes of science, so you wouldn't have to disrupt anything in your room or my room, we go buy a jube cab and a and a and a, and a uh, you pick like uh, we'll rebuy the same one that I have over here, replace the speakers, and then we'll see. Mm, well, you're going to replace the speakers anyway, so you you don't mind I ripping am. the speakers out of yours. No. Yes, yeah, so I don't think we need no. to buy. Oh yeah, any. so we just buy one. Yeah, we'll just we just have to get. Yeah, well that's the thing. Am I willing to rip, rip out the speakers out of this? Maybe I am. I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll talk about it. So if you guys are really interested in seeing what we why think would you about rip this, the speakers out of that? Why would you do that? If I just if I replace the speakers in my cab with what you with exactly what you have, if I they're not if you, you don't know those, that there's they're not they're not the same speakers. It's not going to be the same. It's speakers. not going to be. I'm saying like if you really want a controlled environment, right? Everything has be, to be the, the exact same, same speakers, except the cab. Right. Yeah, except the cab. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. If you really, I I agree. If you buy ones that are, almost have the same spec as these and put them in your cab, which you're going to do anyway. And then we yeah. can see if they, we, we should actually do that. You should get ones that are spec the same because you're going to do this anyway and put them in and then we'll, we'll try to do this Jim little test and see how it works. Yeah. Uh, that, no, I think that's probably the best we're going to do. <laughs> well, stay tuned folks. Stay tuned folks. Stay tuned for stay that. Stay tuned. And, this uh, is getting interesting on the guitar dads. We're, we're, we're going to start getting very we're getting interesting deep. with some of the content. We're getting, getting deep going into deep. this. Deep. But anyway, as always, we thank you listeners each and every single week for tuning us, tuning into us and checking us out on Instagram and Facebook at Guitar Dads Podcast over there. Please tell your friends, listen to the pod, join the groups, join, uh, follow us on Facebook. I mean, on uh, Instagram and Facebook uh, too, don't forget yeah. to Facebook, Facebook to like, subscribe, you know, the drill. And you can check out. Um, go back and uh, go back a few episodes. Make sure you check out the Daddies, our end of year. Yeah, uh, award tell us show. what you think. <laughs> tell us what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? We hope you disagree because we love we love having this conversation. Yes. And um, and make sure you go back a few more episodes, and you can check out our interviews with um with Dallas Dwight, the uh, lead guitarist and uh, lead uh, lyricist or uh, uh, main lyricist of the songwriter. Thank you. Couldn't uh, <laughs> come up with the term. Uh, of uh, our one of our new favorite bands, um, uh, geez, my my goodness, the LA I mean, maybe, I, the LA maybe, my God, it's been a long night. It's it, been all a this long, cab talk is throwing me week. off. Yeah, the LA maybe and, uh, is an incredible band. Our LA maybe, you can go check our interview out with uh, Blake Wyland of the Tow Mob and Corey Congilio and uh, and and Taylor Hughes, an up and coming country uh, artist uh, out of so Nashville. Many, so many great interviews. So many great interviews to finish out the year. We do so interviews go back and check too. those episodes out. Yeah. And right. sometimes we just interview each other every week. And then do don't that. forget Dave Oronado, who we did at the end of last uh, Dave year. Dave Honorado. Dave Honorado was, on, yes. uh, he, he, was on the pod a few weeks ago. Awesome. Fantastic conversation. Awesome stories. Great stuff. So check it out. We're going to get him back on to finish up those stories yeah. at some point soon. So so check out part one and two. They will be a part three. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So anyway, I think for uh, for now, what do you think? This was uh, this week's Guitar Dads podcast. That's it. Keep rock alive, catch you guys on the flip.